Why is Alan Wake so fucking terrible? No! <laughs> Good afternoon, Scott. Hi. What video game recommendation was a lie? See, this is an interesting question because you can cast a wide net with this stuff. The video game industry is full of BS, and if you try and think of the times that they literally lied to our faces, your Killzone 2 fake trailers, your Cyberpunk 2077 fake gameplay mm -hmm. demos for all the press, etc. You could go down that route if you want. I don't know what else uh, people are going to be saying. However, I'm going to go down the route of a game that was extremely well reviewed that I played and went, this isn't remotely a 10 out of 10. Not to call out anyone in particular, you can decide for yourselves down in the comments. Um, but I think Deathloop's terrible. And that game, <laughs> that game was held up as like the game of the year, like a couple of years ago, and it's just this immaculately made thing. And I definitely love Arcane. I love Dishonored. Uh, one, that's kind of all I love from Arcane. <laughs> but oh, I want to love more. Okay, I just, I don't know. And so oh, it's. Pray. I would pray. Oh, I'm not pray. finished. Pray. pray didn't do it for me either. Oh, I like Dishonored one. This guy. This guy. Point being that um, <laughs> dis, uh, death loop, dis loop, the loop that I tried to play, I couldn't get away with. So it's one of those things where. <laughs> I just think it's bells and whistles the game. I think that they bolt a whole bunch of random systems on there in terms of how time passes, in terms of planning your next mission and whatever. But the biomes that you go into are so boring. The levels are so, so boring. The characters, for as well written as they are, don't really feel like they go through anything. And the game just kind of gives up at the end anyway. So all round, I feel like I was recommended that by certain people in this room. <laughs> and I just couldn't get away with it once I actually sat down with it. So I'm, I'm holding Deathloop up as just, just not even remotely worth the scores that it got. And another thing as well is the game's multiplayer, multiplayer multiplayer, mm -hmm. the idea that like an invasion based mechanic in a stealth game, in a game where you need to <laughs> move slowly and plan out some routes and try and watch AI patterns and pick your time to strike, some dude can just beam in and shoot you in the face from the side of the screen, you couldn't even know they were going to happen. I absolutely hated that whole idea. Deathloop does suck though. You and Hello. What video game recommendation was a lie? This is good, right? Because Scott went first, and now I'm here, and now I'm here to stab Scott repeatedly <laughs> with his bad recommendations. You keep Shovel Knight out your mouth. <laughs> I've never played Shovel Knight, which might even be worse than playing it and then saying that it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the recommendation isn't Shovel Knight. It's uh, it's Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, Ooh. here he is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is just uh, protagonist with bow and arrow of the game for me. <laughs> it really didn't resonate in any way whatsoever, even though I thought the, the, the robotic imagery was pretty mm. cool. Um, it just, I played it and I was like, this is a whole lot of stuff on a map and there's a bow and arrow and also, the, the 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 appropriative imagery kind of gave me the ick. So yeah, the Horizon games not really not really my jam. I'm gonna introduce <laughs> a ban on bow and arrows. No more bow and arrows in games. They're gone. What would you replace it with? Guns. Guns. No, not uh, again. Because uh, uh, right, I'd what? replace I, I'd replace the bow and arrow with. Uh, a trusty six shoot. We don't get enough of those. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. You it? With the uh, exclusive fanning oh, yeah. ability, so yeah. I can fan fan the haters down. <laughs> So back in around 2008, I got recommended by a few people a game that I was very on the fence about. I like turn-based battle systems quite a lot as they are engaging and I also have a bit of a soft spot for Sonic the Hedgehog because I grew up a Sega kid. You, Some of you will know where this is going. Uh, Bioware released a Sonic RPG in 2008 called Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. I like this, Chronicles, because it kind of implies it was going to be its own side series. It was absolutely never going to be its own side series. This game is a gigantic turd. Everything about this is bad, basically, and not in a normal Sonic bad way, like the 3D games that, you know, can't keep up with how fast they're going and just fall apart into, like, glitch hell. This is just uncomfortable and boring on every level. Navigating the sort of overworld was just dull and the battles are just taxing and not interesting in the slightest, so that's pretty bad in itself. And also on top of it, with bad Sonic games, at the very least, you can usually say, yeah, the, the game sucks, but the soundtrack slaps, at the very least. That's not true here either. This is one of the worst video game soundtracks I've ever heard. Seriously, I've heard polyphonic ringtones with more character than the soundtrack in this game. Go check out Central City or something after this video. You'll see what I mean. So yeah, terrible in every way. Uh, so just because I like turn-based battles and Sonic doesn't mean that I like awful games. Awful, awful games.
Josh, mate, what Hi. recommendation was a lie, and you can't say all of Nintendo. Hey, hey not today, hey, I can't. Yes, you can. Maybe next week. Scott Tilford, I hate to single you out once again. Please but do. as you know, in 2020, after the release of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I decided that I was a Final Fantasy fan after <laughs> 27 oh. years or however long it was, 26 years on this planet, I decided now I'm going to get into this series. So... When it was announced last year that Final that Fantasy VII Crisis Core was going to get a remaster, I thought, magnificent. I love this <laughs> franchise now. I love Seven in particular. love these characters. Want to know more about this story. And then you said, if I recall, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core is a really good game, Josh. You should buy that game. So I did. It sounds like something I would say. I asked it off my mum and dad for Christmas. Oh, a Christmas game. No. It was. And because I'm also someone who now I don't like to look at trailers or that, you know, much footage before I get a game. So your recommendation was all that I needed <laughs> to put my money down, or in this case, my parents' money down on this title to see how it played. Yeah. Little did I know that it was a PSP game that had been remastered for modern consoles. So That might be on you, though. That might be on me, but I booted this game up and realized that it had the structure <laughs> of a PlayStation Portable game, which means that it's incredibly bite-sized. It doesn't have that much depth to the combat. It's quite repetitive. It's not a console game, you know, it just isn't. It just doesn't have <laughs> that level of fidelity to it, which right. is probably fine for fans who played it on PSP. But for me, who was expecting, obviously not a Final Fantasy VII remake level production, but I was expecting, you know, okay. more. I was expecting <laughs> a little bit more. Okay. And I tried my best to like it, but the voice acting, the story, the combat, the world, it made a really bad impression. Uh, on me and it now stands as one of the few games I have ever traded in in the past 10 years You know, when I've traded in three Well, I'm never gonna get to that. I didn't think traded in three games. One was Far Cry 6 yes. One was Killzone Shadowfall and the other is Final Fantasy 7 Crisis Core and I'm so sorry man and dad So this game uh, I finally got the chance to play because it's it's you know finally been remastered um, and you know, it's it's set up like a really quite a good bit of intrigue at the start. It seemed to be quite well written. And but the problem is, why is Alan Wake so fucking terrible? No, <laughs> show no. Awful game. I've never played it. Preach. Awful <laughs> game. No. No. Awful. No. Awful. No. Awful. It's awful. I, I gave it. up on it. I uh, got several chapters in, and I just realised that. The, the combat and the gameplay is just, it feels like an afterthought. It's unbelievably bad. <laughs> like, like oh, and you, oh, yeah, oh, it's clever. You gotta like, you gotta shine your light on the enemies to make them weaker. All, you, all that, it, it's just the same as pointing a gun at someone, but you have to aim for 10 seconds before you can shoot them. That's pathetic batteries, and clunky Joe? and awkward. Oh, the batteries? Yeah. So what? Oh no, I've got a flashlight that lasts for three seconds. And it's like, I was getting through these sections eventually, but I thought, actually, they're just, it, I'm not having any fun. I'm not having any fun. <laughs> this is clunky it? and poorly designed. And then also, Alan Wake's constant narration throughout the whole thing is appalling. Appalling. All these people just, talking in these noir films. He just, horrible. He just, he, hey, there's plenty of games with, with little bits of narration here and there, but it's like when Alan Wake goes, you know, you walk through a door, and then Alan Wake every time has to go, I walk through the door. That's great. I and love it's like, that. oh, but it, it's not great. It just doesn't work. <laughs> like, Bastion has a, has a consistent narration. And it's perfect. But Alan Wake's narration doesn't fit, it doesn't work. And I picked up some of his manuscript pages, and you know what? He's a shit author, isn't he? Is this supposed to be? He's the Stephen <sighs> King of the gaming mythos. Well, what are you showing that's me? true. He's just. I, I can see Josh is standing there by the door with a lead pipe. This is it. I've dropped the worst take. But Alan Wake, you all told me you didn't, Murray. You're all right. You all told yes. me it was great. And I put it on. I really like control. I thought, oh, Alan Wake, yeah, there's this re remedy. It's the, you know, it's the control guys. Put this on. I was like, oh, it's garbage. Which video game recommendation was a lie? So my pick for this is Elden Ring. And yes, I know Dan hates Elden Ring. It's a big meme at this point. But I thought I'd take this opportunity to give my perspective on this whole thing. And this game was recommended to me a lot. 
Now, when Elden Ring was released, as you all probably know, it got tens across the board. Everyone was loving it. And there's me, somebody who hasn't gelled with any of the Soulsborne games in the past, thinking, well, 10 out of 10s across the board, it, it must be pretty damn good. And I come into the office, I've got Scott, Josh, James Douse, all like, seeing how much fun they're having on this game. So after reading a hell of a lot of reviews and seeing this sentiment repeated over and over, which was, this is the game to jump in on. If you didn't like previous Soulsborne games, this is the one for you. Like, the difficulty curve isn't as high. So, <sighs> this was kind of what pushed us over the edge and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a go, I'm going to buy into the hype and I'm going to download it. So I did, I downloaded it, um, I started it up and just straight away it was like, it hit me like a ton of bricks, it's like this, this is just the same to me personally, like this is the same formula and it's something that I haven't enjoyed in the past so why did I think that I would enjoy it now? I played it a little bit, I died a few times, you know, as you do, and it just didn't gel with me at all. And I just, I look back and I think, well, why, why did I do this? Why did I get this game? And I think the hate that some people get for like speaking out about this franchise and about not actually like gelling with it is a little bit unreasonable because not everyone's gonna find it great. And yeah, I mean, I gave it a go. You can't like give as much more hate for that because I gave it a go, it didn't work for me. And the fact that everyone was saying, oh, you've gotta play it, you'll love it, you'll love it. That was a lie for me. And it's not discounting any of these people because they all enjoyed it and that was great for them. But for me personally, Elden Ring, it ain't it, Chief, it ain't it. Uh, Andrew H. Murray, what does the H stand for? Hate switcher free, brother. Oh! <laughs> well, there's no point beating around the bush for this one because I'm going to get buried for it by you, by you, by you, probably by you as well. Hey, that's my brother. It's like, must be the most recommended game to me personally ever. Everyone holds it up as like the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. It's the best RPG ever, brother. You're going to love this. It's got you the story. Are. It's got the gameplay. It it's got the character. It it's got this. You're going to lose four million hours to this thing yeah, you and, and you'll... Consider them well spent. Well, I spent about 20 hours with this thing and I did not consider them well spent. The thi <laughs> thing people told me, you wanna know what people then. told me about The Witcher 3 was that mm -hmm. it takes like 20 hours to get good. You play 15, 20 and then it really clicks, <laughs> right? From the start. Then the story gets its hooks in you. And I thought straight away, well, why the hell am I gonna waste 20 hours of my life <laughs> playing this thing? But I actually found the opposite was true. I really enjoyed my first 10 hours in this game. Okay. I was hooked, I was cruising around on horses, killing weird goblins and stuff. It was a great time. Killed a griffin, awesome. Got some loot, all that stuff. Then I got to about 15 and I was like, okay, the patterns are starting to wear down on me. And then I got to 20 and I came to the realization that at this core, this game is essentially the same thing as Skyrim and everything else that has come before, dressed up a little bit of a different way. But you know what really turned me off this bloody game? Why the f is it so f horny? <laughs> every, every single character wants to lay pipe. It's ridiculous. Like, you'll march across this land, you'll retrieve this off for Gertrude from a cave because it's been kidnapped by an orc or whatever and she'll come back and suddenly she's wearing the lowest cut top in the name of humanity. I don't want that, I'm 35 years old! No, it's, she goes, well, thank you for saving me otter from the cheese dragon, do you want a No! I'm, I'm, I'm halfway to 70 years old and it's like every single bloody character seems to want to just Geralt's get the rap. Yeah, he is, Geralt's he's a good looking he's man. A he's a good looking man, I'll give him that. He's literally the man of Chaga. But the, the last Chaga. thing I want when I'm sitting there, it's, a, it, you know, I've had a, a day at work, whatever. I'm sitting down there, my partner's sitting right here. <laughs> Orc tits are on the screen. I'm out, I can't do it. Maybe do it once or twice. Like elf one whatever can be your, your husband or your wife or such and such. But every single quest giver, it seems the same thing over and over. Apart from Zoltan and that pissed me off because I really wanted a piece of that dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> yes.